Good health and safety is perhaps most parents' highest priority. It certainly is for me. And in fact, after becoming a mom, it's not just the health and safety of our own children, but of children everywhere that deeply affects me. The awful, horrific, heinous act of child sex abuse is something we all want to eradicate completely from society. And yet, the shocking reality is it is so prevalent. Today, I want to discuss how and when we should start talking to children about good touch and bad touch, when we should start sex education with kids, and how we can raise awareness to eradicate child sex abuse. On the show today, a powwow with child sex abuse victim turned activist Harish Ayer, the author of the book Good Touch, Bad Touch, Payal Shah Karwa, and a concerned mother, Heather Gupta, on the topic. There is verbal, there is non verbal, there is visual. There are many ways that a child could be violated and all of this forms child sex abuse. A look at the wonderful work Arpan and others are doing on safety and sex education and a tete-a-tete -tete with theatre personality and actress Lilette Dubey who's also directed a play on this and has some strong views. This is such a complex area yeah. because the child is so small, so vulnerable when this happens. This is something so important for parents to understand that when a child is coming to you, you have, have to, to believe. believe the child. Lately, there's been a lot of debate on sex education. When's the right age to start? What are age-appropriate ways of talking about sex? I met some interesting people to share their views on the topic. So, to start with, Harish, what is child sex abuse awareness? After reading all those gruesome stories, we often assume that child sex abuse is only about, about a child getting raped. There are a lot of levels to it, and there is verbal, there is non-verbal, there is visual, there are, there are many ways that a child could be violated, mm -hmm. and all of this forms child sex abuse. That is extremely interesting, because I think a lot of mothers out there probably don't know that. Payal, how did you actually come to write the book and what what are your views on this? Put it very briefly, my inspiration for the book has been Harish. Uh, we were colleagues in 2007 and when he opened up to me and he said that he's a victim of child sex abuse. So his story was very touching, very moving. And then it just struck me that Harish's story is something which he must share because um, it's not only about child sex abuse awareness, but it's also the activism. It's also the way he has won over his own uh, trials, uh, yes, you know, that yeah. really inspired me. So that's what inspired me to write the book because it was required. Society needed to know about child sex abuse. There was no awareness. People were not talking about it and they needed to talk about it. As a child, I, uh, what I told my mother was, uh, the first time I told my mother that my, uh, that my uncle touches me here and there. And, uh, and my mother told me, okay, don't go close to your uncle. Mm -hmm. Because even the thought that, that a male child needs to be protected didn't, didn't exist at all because in our society, the way we are conditioned, we are always told that the male child is the protector and the female child is the one who needs to be protected. You know, so my mother didn't have a clue about the fact that a male child could be sexually abused. Okay, now I can reason that my mother didn't know about it. But at that time, I completely blamed my mother because my abuser kept telling me, that if you tell this to your mother, if you tell this to anybody, that person is not going to believe you, they're going to doubt you. And to me, that was doubt. And at least my mother was in that era where people didn't speak about issues like that. When I was 18 and when I actually opened up about the whole episode in graphic detail, mm. that was when she realized that something so catastrophic has happened with me. That time my mother said that, the first thing that she said that if you were a girl, I would have protected you. As a mom of two, to boys, are you conscious of sex education and sex abuse awareness education? Is it something that you have already started talking to your kids about? They're very young, so... They're very young. To be honest, I haven't. But I have started thinking about when I should do that. My eldest is four, just turned four. So now he's still young. But perhaps I need to start using certain words for certain parts of the body, for example, True. rather than making it sort of all very True. childlike. True. There is nothing, nothing shameful about calling your the body words. parts. Yeah. Yeah. Your eye is an eye, your nose is a nose. Why is a penis not called a penis? Why is not a vagina called a vagina? Why so much of censorship on something? It's, it's just another part it. of the body. Yeah. I think all of us are guilty of this. I think all of, most of us are. Using the like baby you words. use a yeah, baby apps. word. And there are many perverted teachers out there. So before that's that, it's better that you... That's a very good point you make, actually. Very, very good point because I'm from the UK. 
So in the UK, there's a huge awareness of child sex abuse. I think it's almost too extreme. True. So if a child comes to school with perhaps a small mark on they'll its arm, the... they'll go to the other extreme of investigation and calling social services. And, and I've heard horrific stories that take it to the other extreme. In India, there's almost none of that. <laughs> so there surely must be a middle ground which you can sort of be aware, be sensible, without going over the top. Now, child sex abuse is not even something that people speak openly about. Mm. So even though people don't speak openly about it, they've opened up about this. Now, if everyone would start speaking out about it, that simply means that this percentage is going to go much higher. So what would you say are the steps for actually helping mothers and parents and caregivers um, with teaching them about child sex abuse awareness and when should they start talking to kids about it and raising awareness? I think the onus uh, lies with parents, especially mothers, because she's a natural caregiver and she's the one who's the closest to the child, whether it's a boy or a girl, till a certain age. I think the right age for at least teaching them about child sex abuse, about the good touch, bad touch, any anything between two and a half years onwards, because that is the time when they start understanding you. If the parents feel that they are not equipped, then there's a lot of other solutions that uh, they can resort to, like they have NGOs. Secondly, I think parents can also approach schools. I know sex education, etc. has been kind of a controversy. I think in a way, yes, it's a controversial thing that uh, why should we not have sex education, some people might say, but I would look at it like a, as a silver lining. I don't know if schools are equipped to talk about sex education or teach sex education to children in the first place. Secondly, I think sex is not a secret, but is it right to stash 250 students in one class and teach them about sex in an academic way. Because when I was in school, uh, I was in a convent and, you know, this, this teacher was talking to us about the reproductive system of girls. And she drew the uterus, which looked like a cow's face, and then she <laughs> drew the fallopian tubes, which looked like the horns. <laughs> and suddenly I was a cow. Is this the right way of imparting sex education to children? If this is how it's supposed to be done in schools, then I'd rather not do it in schools and I would do it to my children personally. I would give them sex education the right way, on my, but in mine. But the concern is, I mean, that's you, because you're quite progressive and you understand the topic. That's but right. if there are parents who don't okay. or who refuse to go there, then the child has no recourse to such information. But the point is, again, that the schools have to be trained to deliver True. that education. True. So it's, it needs to operate at a higher level. As a matter of fact, uh, the right approach would be to ensure that uh, that every school has uh, liaises with, with, an, with a non-profit organization, mm -hmm. like an Arpan, like, uh, like a Tulir. That can actually talk about how it's to be done. And let them educate the educators That's and right. then start a movement. Well, on that note, I have to say it's been such a wonderful discussion. I want to say a huge, huge thank mm -hmm. you. It's been really, really lovely having you all on the thank show. You. Thank you. Coming up, wonderful work the NGO Arpan and others are doing on safety and sex education. We all are special because we are the boss of our body. Great! And a tete-a-tete -a -tete with theatre personality and actress Lilette Dubé, who's also directed a play on it and has some very strong views. <music> Clichéd as it may sound, I think most parents are not so sure how they'll answer questions about sex. Oddly enough, our five-year-old just a few weeks ago asked me, Mummy, how did we come into your tummy and how did we come out? I was pretty taken aback and honestly I was a bit shy, especially because there were two adults sitting in the front of the car. The simplicity and perceptiveness of the question made me realize it's not just our children we need to educate, but ourselves as parents to lose our inhibitions, think on our feet and answer appropriately. I said, Zen, when two people love each other very, very much, like mommy and daddy, they come together in a very tight, special hug, and a little seed is planted in mommy's tummy, which is the baby, and after nine months, comes out as a full-grown baby. He looked at me, and he seemed semi-convinced, but like a curious child, wanted to probe further. And he said, yes, but mommy, how did the seed actually get in there? Did you swallow it? At which point I realized I needed to do some research to find out how best to answer this question age appropriately. All parents have their own way of answering the question. Some say it was God, some say it was magic, some get into the anatomical, biological details. In our case, I'd gone as far as I thought I could 
and now I realized it's best to ask some people who specialize in sex education and safety education on how best to answer the question. Personal safety means learning about how to keep ourselves safe. Personal safety education program has been inducted in our school from last seven years. Arpan has been a great uh, support here. Arpan is an NGO. We were registered in 2006 and right now we are in our seventh year. So from 2006 we've been working with the issue of child sexual abuse. They are very well planned and executed. We have put in a lot of efforts uh, basically to implement this program and uh, all our teachers put in like we go through training, we do model lessons, and it's not all that simple to walk in in a class and handle all these things. So it needs more of preparation than the actual curriculum. For two years, they actually trained the students. They used to take parent sessions, they used to take student sessions. Further, in school, we train the teachers so that, you know, like, entire school is aware of what is the program all about. How many of us feel special here? In the first lesson itself, we talk a lot about their self-image and their self-esteem. We all are special because we are the boss of our body. Great! In the second lesson, we talk about safe and unsafe touches. lesson we talk about their private body parts. So we don't go into the functions of the private body parts or sex organs. We talk about the names of their uh, private body parts. Those private body parts are vagina, chest, buttocks, anus, hips. In the fourth lesson we talk about what we can do for our action plan. So if someone touches our private body parts or makes us feel unsafe by looking at our private body parts, what do you think we should do? We should know and run away and go to a trusted adult. If the trusted adult is not paying attention, we can tell it continuously till the time he, he or she does not pay the attention to Very us. Very good. In lesson 5, we talk about who are your trusted adults or who are the people whom you can go and seek help from. If someone does break our touching rule number 1, is it our fault that it happened? No. no, it's not our fault. And in sixth lesson, we talk about how any form of abuse is not your fault. So once the six lessons are done, we speak to each and every child individually. We have to be on our toes all the time because we are actually having our children with us for more than six to seven hours. So we need to be more alert, more vigilant and track things, observe things, and get back. If a child is safe, only then that child would be healthy. That child would be uh, happy. Because if a child is in pain or is uh, feeling guilt about something that was not even that, chi that child's fault, how will that child be able to uh, achieve its full potential? Or if an organization may not be able to reach out to so many children out there. But if we all can take up a little bit of responsibility, a little bit of this job to care for our children, it would be amazing. This is such a complex area yeah. because the child is so small, so vulnerable when this happens. A, they don't understand, they just feel uncomfortable, but they don't speak. When they speak, the mother doesn't believe it, that her brother or her somebody could be doing this. Now a tete-a-tete -a -tete with the lovely Lilette Dubé, who's been deeply affected by this subject and shares her thoughts. So Lilette, what does motherhood mean to you? I think for me, one of the most important things, functions, roles of my life has been motherhood. You know, I always say, people say, what is the most exciting production you've done? And I said, you know, if you take a scale and whatever work I've done in the theatre and film and I put it all on one side, it will still be so light compared to Neha and Ira on the other side, the most creative productions I've ever done. So I'm very clear what motherhood means. It is the linchpin of my life. I think it defines me. That's a very good way of putting it. 
So Lilette, you've done a play about a very sensitive issue and something we've talked about on the show, uh, child sex abuse awareness. What, what are your views on that and what initiated the play and your interest in this space? Well, the play uh, was uh, commissioned by an NGO. They decided to commission Mahesh Datani to write a play. Write a play. And uh, then, of course, the idea was that, that the play should be done. And I remember I was shooting for Monsoon Wedding and we were having a coffee. And it was strange because in Monsoon also there was, there was that angle, angle you know, yes, about I the remember. uncle and yeah, all that. Yeah. Uh, and it was very, it was serendipity, you know. So it was in the film and we were having a coffee and he said, you know, there is this cu couple who's uh, commissioned me to write this play. But what's the point of just writing a play? Of course, I'm writing, but I wish someone would do it. Yeah. And Tara, I had no idea what the story was. I had no idea of anything. I said, it's a play on this subject. And I said, I have two daughters and it's a story about a girl. Yeah. And I don't want to know any more than that. I will produce it and I will direct it. And then he said, oh, there's a great part in writing and I love you. You know, you should think about doing it as well and all that. And then as it happened, it was beautiful because it was my daughter and I who yes. played yes. the two people in it. And it was a play which I really thought will do like 25 shows. I'm doing it because I believe in in this story. Yes. It's done over 150 shows around the world. And so I remember my own mother who, who's, who was a gynecologist, uh, you know, with Shirodkar in the, in the some 50s. Yeah. And so very feminist and I mean, very forward looking liberal woman. And she told me, what is this? These sort of things don't happen in, in uh, cities. They let. This only happens in, in the villages. And I said, what are you talking? Here are the statistics. Yeah. So anyway, when we did the play, after every show, we had people coming, crying, remembering things and all that, you know, which is okay, which was like a catharsis. Yeah. But to me, the most important thing in this whole exercise, which was a learning, is that this is such a complex area yeah. because the child is so small, so vulnerable when this happens. A, they don't understand. They just feel uncomfortable, but they don't speak. When they speak, the mother doesn't believe it, that her brother or her somebody could be doing this. So they deny the child the, the truth of it. Now, this is something so important for parents to understand that when a child is coming to you, even if he's confused, even if there's a slight element of doubt, you Must have to believe. believe the child. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if it's someone unbelievable, which makes you so upset and uncomfortable, but you have to believe the child. Yes. Because what happens is they don't understand, you know, the, the complexity of the thing. So they get so badly affected in the mind yeah. by something like this. But I think this also brings us to sex education, because what I found is it's as much about educating the parents. When I was launching a book called Good Touch, Bad Touch, mm. and I was reading it and Zen, who was four at the time, was sitting beside me and he said, Mama, what are you reading? My instinct was not to tell him because yeah. it just seemed odd. But the first page of that book actually says kids. that as young as possible, you have to explain what good touch and bad touch is. Yeah in an age appropriate way. Mm. So you don't have to shock them and scare them. Yeah. But because we don't also want to create a paranoid society mm. where everyone's like frightened of touching you know, at all. Yeah, yeah, because we have to make sure but that I there's a balance. I tell you, the child but, is the best judge of that because in the touch, the child knows whether exactly. there is love and genuine affection or there is something that makes the child feel uncomfortable. So I think you it's know? extremely important to it's very important to listen to the child. And to listen tell, and to tell and, yeah, the child yeah. that if you ever feel that there's something course, wrong, you must come and speak. Yeah, yeah. We as parents have to make sure that they don't have that fear, yeah. especially when it comes to communicating with us Absolutely. as parents. And I think, honestly, Lilette, apart from being a super mom, you're doing so much through your own creative endeavors with raising awareness for things like child sex abuse. And is there anything you'd like to say? Anything about parenting, any tips, any suggestions? To me, the bottom line that defines your relationship, what do you do all this for? What is parenting about? That at the end of the day, when they are as old as my kids are, you can say they are my closest friend. If you can say that and your lines of communication and channels of communication are completely clear, no matter what they're doing, I always tell them, I don't care what you're doing, just tell me. I might get irritated and angry, but it's not like I haven't done stuff. You yeah. know, you're my kids, you're chips yeah. of the old block. So I don't expect you to be not adventurous, not try stuff. But I think if you can do that, that's all parenting is. That at the end of the day, you look and you look at your kids and you say, we are like that. Yeah. We're tight. 
they are they're like a, my best friends yeah. then i think you've done something right somewhere down the way <laughs> thank you lele my thank pleasure. you so much my pleasure enjoyed being here atara i'm an eternal optimist and i like to believe we will soon live in a world free of child sex abuse i believe the first step towards its eradication is child sex abuse awareness and increasing and educating all of us on sex education when is the right time to explain to children what is good touch and bad touch next week a very sensitive issue children with special needs we speak to an incredible young girl with special needs and her amazingly supportive family and also an inspirational single mother of an autistic son on how she brings him up to be the star he is and she is also a full marathon runner if you find out early and if you try and help the child in the early stages right. and things can be changed drastically right and sometimes you can't make out unless you have been told that yes this child has this trait please keep writing into our social media platforms and sharing your views and let's hope we can all work towards making this world a safer place